Right. So, okay. A, a typical um, thing to keep in mind is that you have maybe an image, uh, like a camera that often has a megapixel of resolution. So, you, a megapixel is one million pixels. So, you take your image as like a, a vector of one million, of, of one million numbers. But if you represent it in the right basis, uh, if you use what's called a wavelet basis, um, and you, if you have a reasonable image, um, kind of like this, this, this phantom here, then the image should be quite sparse. Maybe only of those million, um, of those million um, numbers, only 10,000 of them should be actually uh, significant. This is one reason why you can do image compression. You know, and um, uh, you can have a, an image is, is, is like a megabyte file, but you, you can compress it into using, say, JPEG format, and uh, it would be a much smaller file, just maybe 10,000 bytes. Um, and the reason is because of this huge image, a lot of the image is, 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 is not very interesting. There's a lot of big white space of very constant uh, um, and, and no features, and, and you, can, you, can compress the, uh, you can use much less uh, space to represent those areas. Okay, so classically, you need one million measurements to reconstruct one million, uh, one million dimensional data, but if you only have 10,000 interesting non-zero coefficients, you should only really need 10,000 measurements. Okay, so you should... Right, so yeah, if you're S sparse, if you only have S, then you should somehow only have S degrees of freedom, and so you should only need S, S measurements rather than N measurements to, to measure. So this is, um, this is the philosophy that motivates now what's called compressed sensing, also called compressive sensing or compressive sampling, that uh, the number of measurements you need to, to reconstruct an object should not be proportional to its uncompressed size, which is what people have been doing previously, but to its compressed size. So a, mega, you know, a megapixel image, you don't need a megabyte of data. A, measure, a megabyte of measurements. You, if, it's, if, it can be if your image can be compressed to, to, to say, 10,000 bytes, you should only need 10,000 measurements. Now, you could ask uh, why you care, uh, because we have digital cameras, which work very well. I've just seen quite a lot of them just recently. Um, and, um, you know, they take their megapixel image, and, and then they compress it, and we, we, get, we have all these great pictures, and that, that's fine. Um, and that's true. So for um, for for consumer photography, okay, we have uh, this works just fine. But um, uh, there are many applications. But you know, but, but on the other hand, these 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 cameras they are they are somewhat expensive. You know, a couple hundred dollars. Um, they, um, they 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 because they um, they take a lot of measurements and then they do a lot of compression and so forth. They they require a lot of computer power. There's a lot of, of fancy electronic chips inside these these things, and that's that's why they're expensive. They also consume a lot of power. Um, now it's not a problem when you only have one camera. But suppose, for instance, you want to um, uh, do what's called a sensor network. You, you, uh, you say you, you want to monitor some environment, like a forest, maybe, um, and you want to put lots of little sensors all over, you know, one, one on each tree, right? And, you want to, and they want to measure something, you know, uh, plant life or temperature or whatever. Okay, it doesn't have to be imaging. Um, now, if you put a, a, a big, expensive camera in each one of these trees, um, A, this would be incredibly expensive, um, and B, that you always have to keep changing the batteries. Okay. Um, and um, so if you wanted to, to monitor a, um, a large area using a, a network of sensors, um, then what you'd like is to, is to have very, very cheap sensors, or right? just you know, maybe a few cents for each sensor, right? just something which, uh, 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 some small chip that does something very dumb. Right? Each sensor only measures one measurement, but you have, and, the, and, and, um, and emits it by, some, uh, by, a, by, by radio, say. Okay? And you have one million of these things scattered through your area. Um, and maybe you know they're so cheap that 10% of them fail, and or give you lousy data. But you know 90% of them are reliable, um, and you should somehow still be able to reconstruct a good picture of your environment um, using um, something like this. Okay. And so um, anyway, so this is the type of situation where compressed sensing is is good. So compressed sensing is is a win whenever um, you, have, you need three requirements. You need your signal to be somehow sparse or have structure that it can be compressed. It is not arbitrary data. It is data of a certain form. If you know that, if measurements are somehow expensive, that you can't take that many measurements because it, it, it takes, costs too much money or it takes too much power or it takes too much time. The MRI is a case where it takes too much time. Um, but, okay, but the third thing that you need, on the other hand, so um, each sensor is very dumb. Right? You, you can't, each sensor cannot do any clever computation. Right? But when you collect the data in a computer, the computer that receives the data, that is allowed to do computation. So rather than, so see, like, a, like a camera, um, camera, what cameras do nowadays is that they take, they take an image, they compress it in the camera, then, they send the, the, then when you download the image, you uncompress it in your computer. So both the camera and the receiver, the, the sensor and the receiver do computation. 
But suppose you just have a very dumb sensor. It just takes measurements and does nothing to them. It just, it just reports the measurements. But then they collect them to a big computer, and you, the, com the computer is allowed to, 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 to crunch the data and reconstruct it. So whenever you have all three of these things happening, then you can, you can then compress sensing has, can become um, massively uh, uh, better than other uh, paradigms. And this comes up in all kinds of applications. So um, imaging, as I said, um, there's something called the single pixel camera, which I'll show you later. Um, something called sensor networks, as I've discussed, MRI, I've discussed also astronomy. Um, there's another situation where measurements are very expensive. You know, telescope, there's only so many telescopes in the world, but you want to measure all the, all the stars in the universe. Um, and you have limited time, you can only measure at night usually and so forth. There's, there's all kinds of, of, uh, of limitations. Um, it also comes up in, in statistics, although I won't, uh, um, I won't discuss those uh, applications much. But okay, there are many, many places where this sort of thing comes up. Also ge um, yeah, geology, uh, when you are looking for oil or something. Okay, so, um, all right. So that's the, that's, that's, the, that's the dream, if you wish, to, 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 to uh, reconstruct sparse signals using very few measurements. So the first question is, is this even possible? Is it even mathematically possible? Suppose you have infinite computer power, okay? Is it even mathematically possible to do compressed sensing? And that's not too hard to, to show. Um, okay, if, if, you have to, if you're solving an A equals B problem, um, and you have, um, and you have a lot of data, but many, very few measurements. Then you, your, your, your matrix looks like this. It's, it's got many, many, many columns, but very few rows. Okay? So um, what that means is that, is that the columns cannot all be independent, because okay? there's not, not enough space. Okay? So, and that, that's, that's reflective of the fact that this is an underdetermined problem. There's, 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 um, there's not enough space in your, in your measurement space to, to make these, um, all your columns independent. But suppose you have a more restrictive condition. Suppose that out of all these columns, uh, you have some small number s, which is your sparsity. Um, suppose you know that, that, only, um, that every two s columns of your um, measurement matrix are independent. So you, you can't get everybody to be independent, but suppose that uh, every two s um, columns are independent. So for example, you kind of have a million by 100,000 matrix, you have a, a million dimensional set of data, 100,000 measurements. It's quite possible that if you, give, if you take just 10,000 columns, 10,000 columns in this 100,000 dimensional space should be independent. So if you have this, this, this one condition, this restricted independence, so not all columns are independent, but just every subset, of, every sparse set of columns are independent, then you can do compressed sensing in principle. That uh, then every time you have a, a sparse vector s, x, and you measure ax, then you can reconstruct x uniquely from ax, that there's in, enough information in ax to reconstruct x. So uh, what this means in, uh, in principle, at least, is that uh, if you want to sense s sparse data, you just need two S measurements. So if, you, if there's a, a signal which is 10,000 bytes when compressed, you just need 20,000 measurements rather than one million. Okay, so uh, you can compress your sensing. Okay, so um, I will actually prove this lemma because it's, 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 uh, it's actually quite, quite simple. So uh, you prove by contradiction. Uh, suppose you can't reconstruct sparse data. What that means is that there is two different sparse data, X and X prime, uh, which are both S sparse, such that when you measure both of them, you measure AX, you measure X prime, that they're identical, so that you can't separate, you can't distinguish the two. So that's what it means for uniqueness to fail. So if you have two S sparse uh, uh, signals and you measure them both and they give you the same, then what you do is that you subtract uh, them from each other, and then because A is linear, that means that A of X minus X prime is zero. But X minus X prime, or X is S sparse, X prime is S sparse, so X minus X prime is two S sparse. It only has two S non-zero elements. And if you do the linear algebra, saying that AX minus X prime is zero is saying that the, the, the two S columns for which these coefficients are non-zero have some linear relation between them. And that contradicts the assumption. So as long as you have linear independence of, of a sparse set of columns, you, um, uh, you can do compressed sensing. 